Good morning and happy Easter. Welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of Perpetual Help for the celebration of the Easter Sunday of the Resurrection of the Lord. As we gather together, we begin with our diocesan prayer for vocations, which is found on the back cover of the Pew Booklet. Heavenly Father, we beg you for an increase in religious vocations and holy marriages in the Diocese of Rapid City. Look upon us with favor and choose from our homes those who are needed for your work. Send your spirit to strengthen us and give us open hearts and minds ready to say yes when you call. Help our parishes and families encourage vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life. We commend our prayers to our patroness, Our Lady of Perpetual Help, through Christ our Lord, amen. The numbers for the hymns and mass parts of today's mass are printed on the order of worship, which is available at the church entrances. Our presider today is Father Brian Christensen. Please stand. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your My brothers and sisters, what a great joy that we come together on this, the Lord's day, the day that the Lord has made, when our Savior Jesus Christ rises triumphant from the grave to conquer sin and death and to give us the bright promise of new and everlasting life. Welcome to all friends and family that join us on this Easter day. 
truly it is a beautiful day in many ways, a day that the Lord has indeed desired for us to share in. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, 
you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day Thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praises to the Paschal victim. Christians yield in all they shun. Lamb that the sheep has ransomed, Christ no sin who committed. Reunited sinners to the Father. Death and life fought each other. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark 
and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the, other, with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. He is risen. He's risen indeed. This is uh, an ancient Christian Easter greeting. One person says, he is risen, and the other replies, he is risen indeed. It goes back to the first days of the resurrection when the disciples on the road to Emmaus met Jesus and realized that he had been raised. And they race back to Jerusalem and they say, he is risen. And the disciples there go, duh, he's risen indeed, right? Like, we've seen him, Simon's seen him. Um, so throughout these almost 2,000 years on this Easter day and throughout the weeks ahead, um, it's a beautiful greeting between um, Christian men and women. He's risen, he is risen indeed. So we're going to practice that. I'm the one guy, you're the other. He is risen. He is risen you're better than eight o'clock mass. Don't tell them. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Today is the triumphal feast of our Lord's victory over sin and death. Let us, all of us, all of us, after the long days of Lent, the days of fasting, the days of abstinence, the days of prayer, the days of charity, the lows and the highs, the successes and the failures, they're behind us now. After these long days of Lent, we come now to enter into our feast of faith. Receive, today receive the riches of God's loving kindness. We who have known poverty have the riches of the kingdom revealed to us. We who know sin and shame now receive mercy coming to us, pardon from the grave. We need not fear death, for our Savior's death has set us free. Jesus, by his death, and his resurrection has conquered death. Death overcame his body on the cross, but death met God face to face, and death was conquered by the overpowering love of God in Jesus Christ. As St. Paul says, O oh death, where is your sting? O oh hell, where is your victory? Christ is risen, and death is overthrown. Christ is risen, and the demons are fallen. Christ is risen, and all the angels rejoice. Christ is risen, and life reigns. For Christ, being risen from the dead, has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. He is risen. The resurrection of Jesus is the crowning truth. The resurrection of Jesus is the crowning truth of our faith in Christ. 
The resurrection of Jesus was the central truth of that first Christian community. And that truth has been handed on to us as central and foundational for our lives. The resurrection of Jesus is testified to and firmly established by the Gospels and all of the writings of the New Testament. And the resurrection is preached as an essential part of the Paschal mystery along with the cross. The ancient hymn goes, Christ is risen from the dead. Dying, he conquered death. To the dead, he has given life. St. Paul teaches us that if Christ has not been raised, empty too is his preaching, and empty too is our faith. Paul says that without the resurrection, Jesus might be considered a good teacher, a model of virtue. If Christ is not raised from the dead, St. Paul says, then he and the apostles become false witnesses and teachers of error. But Paul And Paul is emphatic about this. If the dead are not raised, then neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our faith is in vain and we remain in our sins. But Paul knows differently, and he testifies with clarity and conviction. He echoes the witnesses of all the early church. Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. He has conquered sin and death. We are not left in our sins, but we find mercy and forgiveness. And you and I are not destined for eternal darkness and oblivion. We are called to life life eternal in the glory of the kingdom of heaven. This is the cause of our joy that Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. The feast day that we celebrate today, this Easter, is called the Paschal Feast. The Paschal Feast. Paschal comes from the word pasch, which means lamb. And it's a reference to the Passover lamb that was sacrificed by the Jewish people as they recalled and celebrated their liberty from slavery in Egypt. Jesus, Jesus has transformed that Passover into a universal Passover, a universal sacrifice for the liberation, for the salvation of all people in every place and in every time. The Paschal Feast, the celebration of the Paschal mystery of our celebration, has two aspects to it. First, Christ's death on the cross, which liberates us from sin. And second, his glorious resurrection, when Christ opens for us the way to new and eternal life. This new life is our being joined to Christ, our incorporation into God's grace, his presence and his action. We have been redeemed by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have been given new life in him. And now our new life has begun. Our new life began first in our baptism. In baptism, we were baptized into the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In the baptismal font, we go down into the water as a symbol of our death. We die with him, but we come out of those baptismal waters and we rise with Christ. God, in baptism, puts to death our old self and he raises us up as a new creation in Christ. Baptism, our participation in the Paschal mystery, brings about our adoption as beloved sons and daughters of the Heavenly Father. And baptism makes us brothers and sisters in Christ, truly related in one faith, one baptism, one Lord. Today, as we celebrate this Paschal feast, this feast of Easter, we will renew our baptismal promises. We will recall how we have been saved by the death and glorious resurrection of Jesus. We have found new life through him. We have the bright promise of abundant life now and eternal life in heaven. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus has made all things new. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice, and we are glad in it. He is risen.
Please stand. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the holy Catholic Church. Our response to the baptismal promises is, I do. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. We turn now to our loving God and most merciful Father, that he may hear our prayers on this Easter day. For the church, may God's great love draw many souls to his Son, Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in authority, may God move their hearts to serve in humility always protecting the innocent and the most vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people suffering from chronic illness, may God bring them hope amid their suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who receive the sacraments for the first time this Easter, may God continue to guide and ignite their faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, as we celebrate Christ's resurrection, may he lead us to new life as disciples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, having died with Christ, may they soon find peace and rest in his loving care. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear us as we celebrate the joy of our salvation, the resurrection of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all those who are holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give, the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit. 
granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Water to Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment light and peace to us also your servants who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs who john the baptist stephen matthias barnabas ignatius alexander marcellinus peter felicity perpetua agatha lucy agnes cecilia anastasia and all your saints admit us we beseech you into their company not weighing our marriage but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the 
Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And And with with your your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I 
I call to the Lord in my distress. He has answered and freed me. The Lord is at my Body side, Christ. I do not fear. What Body can Christ. mankind do against Body me? Christ, Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the peace. at my side Body as Christ. my helper. I shall Body not look in triumph on my foes. Body of Christ. It is better to take refuge in the Lord Body of Christ. than to trust in a man. Christ, our Passover Christ. has been sacrificed. Body of Christ. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia, alleluia. Body of Christ. 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 I was thrust down, thrust Body down, and falling, but the Lord was my helper. Body of Christ. The Lord is my strength and my song. Body of Christ. He was my Savior. Christ, Body our Passover, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia, alleluia. Body of Christ. There are shouts of joy of and salvation Body of Christ. in the tents of the just. The Lord's right hand has done mighty deeds. His right hand is exalted. Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia, alleluia. God bless you, Father, Son. I will thank you for you answered, and you are my Savior. The stone that the builders rejected Body of Christ. has become the cornerstone. Body of Christ. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia, alleluia. By the Lord. Has this been a done? A marvel in Christ. our eyes. This is Body the Christ. day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it Body and Christ. be glad. Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Success. Body of Christ. Blessed is he who comes Body of Christ. in the name of the Lord. Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. My God, I exalt you. 
Give praise. praise to the Lord, for he is good. Give praise. His mercy and endures forever. Give Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Therefore let Give us praise. keep the feast. Alleluia, alleluia. Give praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy praise. Spirit, as it was in the Body beginning, praise. is now, and ever shall be, Body world praise. without end. Amen. Christ, Body our Passover, praise. has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the feast.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Once again, thank you, and what a joy it is to celebrate this great day, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day with friends and family and loved ones. Um, this Wednesday here at the cathedral, in place of our regular Faith on Fire, we'll be having a mass here at 5.30 in the main church. It'll be a teaching mass, an explanation of the various parts of the mass, entering more deeply with our understanding and our mind and heart uh, into the sacred mysteries. That's Wednesday here in the main church at 5.30. And, of course, there'll be food after Mass that Wednesday. This evening, there's no EDGE or Life Team for our middle school and high school students, and we'll pick up next Sunday. Um, tomorrow, for Easter Monday, the offices are closed uh, for the Easter holiday. Your cathedral staff has been amazing, truly amazing. Every single person on our staff here has been working double time and, and in such a beautiful way to help us in these celebrations of these sacred days of the Holy Triduum and the Easter season. Um, also, er, altar server training will resume next weekend, next Sunday. Uh, and just a note uh, as you uh, take off today, to just uh, rearrange the pews before you depart. Put the hymnals and the booklets back in there. And if those little sheets that we're using for Easter Sunday, if you'd take them with you or put them on the tables at the entrance, that would be very helpful to our hospitality ministers. Once again, a, a warm Easter uh, Blessing upon you, your family, and your loved ones from myself, the priests and deacons and staff here at the cathedral. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, hallelujah. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>